Hi guys, Adam the UNC back again with some more simple, fun, and effective games and activities that are perfect for um, occupational therapy, either over telehealth or in person in the clinic, or a good old-fashioned home-based learning with your child. If you do like these videos and want to stay updated, don't forget to click subscribe. Any videos you'd like to see, just let me know in the comments and I'll be delighted to do a video for you and your kid, okay? So I get a lot of requests for any interesting, cool, new games and activities just using very simple household items. Okay, so today I'm going to do a load of things with a banana. We've got a whole bunch. Ah, see what I did there? A whole bunch of cool activities. I use bananas actually quite a bit. I have like 13 little games I play with them. Today I'm going to show you two of my favorites. One is called making animals with the bananas, naturally called bananimals. And the other is going to use the banana skins. It's just called go bananas. So let's go bananas and see what we can do with these guys. So activities like these are brilliant because it's using something very familiar in a kind of a weird, surprising, silly and fun way. Okay, so we're going to take a banana each. We're going to take one banana off the bunch. There's a bunch of animals it can make. It can make a dolphin, a dog, um, but my favorite is this guy who's actually a squid or an octopus. Okay, so he, he's a binoctopus called Barry the Binoctopus. This works really well because the banana skin is actually a really good canvas for pen. So for like an ink pen, it works really well because you can draw on it and it takes the pen very easily. To start off with, the child's going to peel a banana. Take a clue from monkeys and apes here. Monkeys and apes don't peel it up here. They peel it from down here. This is the easier bit. Okay, but first we've got a little bit of scissor skills. So what I would do is I won't help it. I'll have my own banana. The child has their own banana. All right, I'll get them to snip the top off the banana up here. We're not going to need that for Barry. Okay. So we're going to snip the top of it. Again, it actually is quite pleasing to cut a banana with a pair of scissors. If you've never tried it, it's actually quite satisfactory. Okay, you've got your banana. I can take the sticker off. Even all of these things themselves, like taking the sticker off your banana, cutting the top off it, that's all nice motor skills as well. It's not just the nice clean things for part of your plan. The setup, you get lots of nice learning there as well. So even if we have little sticky bits, trying to peel those off for a few seconds, very nice dexterous motor skills. But if you can't do it, if the some bits are a bit like frustratingly stuck on, don't worry, we can make them part of the story. That can be like barnacles that are stuck to um, barrier of an octopus here, okay? So we're gonna flip them over, and now we're gonna draw a little face on it. So take this side, the bendy side here, I'm gonna draw a little happy face for Barry, okay? So he's gonna have two eyes, his two little eyes, and draw little circles. He's got two happy little eyes and a little mouth. Okay, so there's Barry's little face. Okay, and an octopus needs tentacles. Okay, so our tentacles are going to have little suckers on them. So before they peel off the tentacles, I'm going to start off and show them how to draw the little suckers. So just little circles along the side of the banana. Okay, so I'm going to speed this one up. I'll do it real fast. Perfect. Okay, guys. So look, he's got his little suckers all around his tentacles. Now we have to make his tentacles. So we're going to peel a banana up to just here. We find the end, the bottom. Again, lovely dexterous motor skills. The child has to be quite um, good motor modulation here as well. So they're not being too aggressive or too impulsive. They'll smoosh it. They'll hurt Barry. Okay, so I'm going to make a little backstory about him as we're doing this. So you see, as I peel up, it's coming off with his little suckers. We stop here, stop, so we don't peel it off too hard, okay? And we do that for each of his little tentacles. So we have to pinch and peel carefully. So if you need a little hand over hand assistance from a younger guys, that's fine, we can do that. Give them all the assistance they need, but because it's a character now, they care about them a little bit more. It's not just a worksheet. It's something interesting we're gonna play with them in. Peel and peel them up. Now, if we get a part like this that has two tentacles stuck together, great. We're going to use that in a second. We're going to break off the bottom of them, so halfway up. Off we go. And there's Barry. Now, the part that was stuck together, we're going to have to pinch and peel down the middle. Like so. Okay. We'll put them on a little plate, spread out his tentacles. And we've got Barry, our little binoctopus there. Okay, cool, and that's our little banana. So we have lots of 
pre-writing skills, fine motor skills, a little bit of care and dexterity to not being too impulsive and damaging Barry, because at the end we want something kind of cool, and he's going to be the beginning of a little deep sea story we're going to make all about our little banana, okay? Let's look at the next part. Now, with this piece of banana we just uh, broke off from Barry, one of the, it gives us a really cool thing to use about textures. So a lot of lovely sensory textural play here. So we can get three different textures from this one banana. It works very well. It's one of the best mediums you can use for using knife and fork skills, for cutting skills, because banana slices very nicely. So if we slice a few little pieces of banana, if they're at knife and fork level, you can use the fork to stabilize. If that's a little hard, just holding with the hand and cutting with this little sawing motion works very nicely. Now, banana slices are lovely, and the child can play with them and eat them wherever they want to do, okay? It's a nice and safe thing to do at home in your kitchen, but they're quite slimy. A lot of my guests don't like that, but they kind of like the story, and it smells interesting, and it feels different, okay? So it has a slimy texture. So we can make these, like, little corals around Barry. These little coral friends, okay? But also, if we take a bigger bit, say if we can another couple of slices, maybe, or we can even break off one, we can use the fork, for some heavy work and smoosh them and make it like a smooshy texture. So bleh. they can even do it for some messy play and squish it in your fingers. I don't know if you're an adult, when was the last time you squished a banana between your fingers? But it's quite an intense sensation. Squish, 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 okay? Bleh. So that's one way to do it. Now the last way where you do, it's not as messy, you're gonna make banana sticks. So to make banana sticks, Take your banana, it's a brilliant little fine motor task. You squeeze it gently to just break it up in the middle. And look, then it will pull apart in three segments. See? So it breaks apart along the kind of seam. And then it's not slimy. It feels kind of dry and there's almost like a pith to it, okay? And we can make them like little fish or like little pieces of seaweed. Okay, we break it along the stem we make banana sticks, okay? So we can have sliced ones with knives and forks. We can have mushed ones with the fork or with our fingertips. Then we can have dry banana sticks like this. Again, it could be like a little coral or something as well for a little undersea adventure here, okay? So that's our little banana molds. We use all the banana as much as you want the child to eat it. Mm, that can be part of a fun with food group. It works really nice as well. But it's a very, very sweet, very effective little activity the child will really, really enjoy. Now the last activity, this is one I really, really like. The last one I'm gonna show you, okay? This is, the challenge you're gonna ask the child is can they tie a banana skin in a knot? And they're gonna think about a whole banana like this and say, can you tie a banana in a knot? That's crazy talk, who can do that, okay? I'm gonna show you how to tie a banana in a knot, okay? So I'm gonna borrow one of Barry's little tentacles, back here. And to begin with, I'm gonna to have to make banana strings. To make banana strings, I'm gonna pinch and as skinny as I can, I'm gonna peel the uh, peel, peel the peel, into little strings. It's small, if I can peel that again, so you need to pinch really tight, and peel, and because it will peel right down the seam, again, feels quite pleasing, feels quite nice, you'll get a lot of these little strings. We can make these as part of our story as well. So we can make these into like seaweed, little dangly bits of seaweed for under the sea. But then what we wanna do is take one long skinny bit and see if we can tie that in a knot, okay? Just like a normal, regular knot from a piece of string. The child will hold it, you get them to pinch, fold underneath, and pull, nice, and gently to make a little knot. Now it's really good for motor modulation again because the child pulls too hard, oh, it's gonna rip, oh no, I broke my knot. Okay, so try again, a little banana string, tuck, you've heard of cheese strings, these are banana strings, and tie in a little knot, okay? So we've got sensory play, textural play, motor modulation, fine motor skills, grip strength, so much going on there all from one banana. So it's a really, really great, you can get like 20 minutes of activity out from this little one banana fella, and that's it. Okay, that's it for today, guys. So it was um, my little banana mills. 
and then the banana string game. There's actually a whole load of more. There's like a magic trick I do with the banana as well, but I might save those for another day, okay? So thank you so much for watching. If you do use the banana activity, the gold bananas we'll call it, or any of my other ones, do let me know. I love getting those comments from people around the world. I get them every day and they just are the highlight of my day. So thank you so much guys for checking this out. Until next time, Adam the OT.